Good afternoon, everyone. Try that again. All right. As you know, DAV has had a reputation for leading the pack when it comes to women veterans' issues. We have led the charge on women veteran issues and will continue to do so. Our report, The Long Journey Home, is but one example of our dedication in pushing legislation to equalize women veterans' treatment to that of men. Our report of Long Journey Home highlights gaps that are seen across the federal landscape. It makes 27 recommendations to educate lawmakers and the public in an effort to remove these gaps for women veterans. Much of this legislation that we discuss today will be a direct result of what's covered in the report. This report is online and can be accessed through the DAV website. So let's talk about pending legislation. I know you all remember that, schoolhouse rock. They should have never gotten rid of that. So let's look at S-471 and H.R. 1356. There are currently 10 women veterans bills pending. These bills seek 1356 and H.R., I mean S-471. These bills seek to improve women veteran health care by ensuring that proper staffing and privacy and the safety of women veterans is at the forefront and when making plans involving infrastructure that are a part of initial plans and not an afterthought. H.R. 1575. This bill seeks to make permanent the pilot program for newly separate women veterans transitioning back into their communities. Women veterans participating in the pilot will receive counseling on employment, family, community, reintegration, stress reduction, and conflict resolution in a retreat setting. H.R. 1948 and 1496. This bill deals with stipends to pay for childcare. It makes direct provisions of childcare at VA facilities, provides payments to private childcare facilities in the community, and a collaboration with other federal agencies and providers in the community. H.R. 2054 deals with gender-specific care, and it makes sure that gender-specific care is continuously available at the VA medical centers and the community outpatient, community-based outpatient centers. S-2487 and H.R. 2915. These bills seek to provide tools for suicide prevention by addressing the treatment of women veterans who served on classified missions by making it easier for them relative to the disclosure of classified information. It also, makes, it also provides instructions for providers and staff when interacting with these veterans. It identifies what's good about the program and also seeks veteran satisfaction. HR I mean, 3365 and S469. This bill, this bill calls for both DOD and the VA to use best practices regarding fertility issues of ill and injured veterans that was incurred in the line of duty. It also provides fertility counseling and also has a provision for adoption assistance. So how can you help? You can meet with your elected officials here and at home. Always use your talking tips. And also use the DAV website to stay on top of current bills that we are tracking. You can also follow DAV on social media, on Facebook and Twitter. Listed you have my Twitter handle, the headquarters, keep the promise, and one I added for DAV Women Veterans. So please tweet. If you're busy, tweet, 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 tweet. So I can't talk about all of the topics that I would like to talk about, but here are a few hot topics. SR 2487 and HR 2915. 
These are bills, as I stated before, that aid in suicide prevention. Women veterans between the ages of 18 and 29 have the highest rates of suicide in comparison to women who have not served. Women veterans also commit suicide at a rate that is six times higher than those who have not served. One veteran suicide is too many. Let's talk about homelessness. There's no bill di currently directed at women veterans homelessness. However, we are tracking several. The rate of homelessness among women veterans is expected to, com to rise commensurate with the number of women serving. Homelessness among women veterans is at least twice as high as those of non-veterans. On any given night, you can find 47,725 women sleeping on the streets. And about 1.4 million are in danger of being homeless. This means that they may be having difficulty maintaining a home. And 1,708 are with families on the streets. This number does not make a dif difference between male or female. However, it does say that those are families that are on the street on any given night. Let's talk about gender specific issues. Gender specific, I hear a lot of things out there. Women just want the good stuff. It's not about that. Gender specific care does not mean preferential care for women. Women veterans are not asking for special treatment, just equal treatment. Gender specific care, thank you. I love that. <laughs> Gender specific care means the ability to provide specialized care based on gender. A pap smear for a woman and a prostate exam for a man. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> it means women's specific needs are met at the same level of males. One size does not fit all. With the recent integration of women into all military occupations, VA must be ready to meet these women as they transition into their communities as veterans. A rising group of veterans in this group are between the ages of 18 and 44, representing 42% of women veterans. These women are within childbearing ages. And another interesting note to number, 57% of women are service connected, which will mean that VA will have to be ready to service their needs. On an average, women VHA users are younger than males. More and more women are, ex as more and more women are exposed to combat, it will be necessary for VA to be ready to service their needs and to be able to provide reproductive care, gender specific screening, breast care, prenatal, OBGYN, and others. Identification. Many women still do not identify as veterans. In September of 2015, VA launched its I'm One campaign to try to address this issue. Women veterans still continue to feel isolation and left out. They feel as if their service is devalued when compared to men. This Veterans Day, Make it your mission to thank her. The DAV Interim Women Veterans Committee of 2015 worked hard on the development of a toolkit for the Department Women Veterans Advisory Committee Chairs. This toolkit should be used as a guide to enhance your program or start your program. It provides instructions, links, and valuable information on women veterans issues. DAV, the department, and depar chapter commanders should familiarize themselves their selves with the valuable tool.
the DAV Women's Veterans Landing Page. This is another resource that is at your fingertips to guide you to current legislation on DAV's position, specific bills, issue briefs, it has a link for the toolkit, and more. At this time, I would like to take time to recognize the 2015-2016 DAV Interim Women Veterans Committee. The chair, Idalis Marquez, Joanne Martinez, Greg Remus, and Evangeline Schultz. Thank you, and this concludes my presentation. I would like to encourage you to be active, use your talking tips. If you have any questions, please stop by and see us. Get involved. Thank you. <laughs>